FPV. Uh, for Christmas, I got another little uh, park flyer. It's the King Kong ET115 V2. It's a little 115 millimeter quad. So it comes in this nice little uh, lunchbox style carrying case, which is really nice. In the box, you get the, uh, of course, the ET115 V2. Uh, you get uh, three spare canopies. And uh, let's see, then there's a box in here. I'll open up the box. And it looks like you get uh, a bunch of spare props. Um, you get some, uh, there's some rubber battery holders there. And then you get a uh, 3S, 3S battery here. It looks like it's a 600 mAh 50C battery. So, um, yeah, it's a pretty complete little kit, which is nice. Uh, let's go ahead and quickly quickly go through the specs of this. This is my first King Kong. Um, the wheelbase is 115 millimeters. It's a true X. Um, the props on here are uh, 2345, three bladed props. Uh, the motors, let's see if I can get these in, into focus. Uh, it's probably hard to see, but uh, the motors are XT 1104, 5500 um, KV motors. Um, the flight controller in here is a fly tower 20 by 20 F3 um, flight controller with OSD. Um, as far as the um, ESC, it's also a 20 by 20 millimeter, a 4 in 1, 12 amp um, ESC, supports B Heli, um, and it'll run 2S or 3S. And then it uh, also comes with an XT30 connector, which I really like. Uh, the camera that it has is a 800 TVL, 150 degree field of view uh, camera. Looks pretty nice. And then uh, I got the bind and fly version and it supports the FR Sky D16 protocol. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and remove all the stickers and then I'm going to go ahead and set it up in Betaflight Configurator. So I'll quickly go through some tips and this will improve your flying experience with the ET-115. The first being um, I would recommend putting some additional shrink tubing around both the VTX antenna and the receiver antenna. Uh, they're very fragile and in a crash, um, you know, you can... Uh, you know, flip upside down, and uh, this will give it some extra extra um, protection. Uh, you're not going to be hurting the reception any by doing that, so recommend that. The next thing I would recommend is securing your XT30 battery connector to an arm with a tie wrap. You'll thank me later because in a crash, what can happen if the battery gets ejected uh, and you don't have that secured, you can actually pull the um, battery lead off the ESC board. The next thing I would recommend would be to run this thing props out and what that means, it flies much better. Um, what that means is the props in relationship to the front canopy here is going clockwise away. The adjacent prop is doing the same thing. It's going in a counterclockwise motion out or away from the front here of the canopy. If you go on the diagonal, um, this prop here is running the same direction as this prop. So it's gonna be going away from the back or out away from in a counterclockwise motion from the back. And then this prop is running the same direction as this one, which is in a clockwise rotation and if you look at it, it's going away or out from the back of the canopy here. The other recommendation, and I'll show you how to, to uh, do that in BL Heli, change the direction, upgrade the firmware because it was down level. And uh, also um, in uh, Betaflight, there's a simple, simple change that you need to do to also uh, so you can run this uh, with props out. 
and then we'll also upgrade uh, the firmware version. It came pretty down level. I think it was like 3.1 some point something, and uh, it'll fly much better if you upgrade it to the most recent one. It, for me, it's uh, this time is uh, 3.5.4, so I'll go ahead and do that. And uh, the last tip is, and I'll show you what I did for for some reason, um, these four bolts here, or screws, were, um, there's uh, some uh, lock, lock nuts on the top here. They did tight, tighten them down enough, or maybe they did that on purpose, but the whole flight controller stack um, was moving too much. This is soft mounted, so I corrected that, and I'll show you how to do that as well. So one of the things that helped the flight characteristics of the ET-115 was um, you need to tighten up, see these lock nuts right here. Um, mine was just uh, totally loose. You know, I thought at first, well, maybe that's by design, but um, I was getting some throttle oscillations that I was trying to tune out with, uh, with PID, PID tuning, but didn't seem to help. And I noticed that um, these uh, four screws here and the whole flight controller stack was just really loose and so what you know I did was just cinch it up enough to where it's just slightly tight but not enough you know this thing is soft mounted if you look here you can see the little rubber grommets you know but not enough to where it's squishing the uh, the grommets but enough to keep the the flight controller from just moving around. I mean, it was just really loose. And uh, so the minute I tighten these down just a little bit, again, these are lock nuts. So, um, you know, you don't have to worry about um, them coming loose. But uh, anyways, that significantly helped. So I ended up splitting the video into two parts. The first part being the review and tips to getting the most out of the Eldark ET-115 V2. Uh, and also some flight footage so you can see how well it flies. Uh, the second part is uh, really general setup and configuration in beta flight in BL Heli um, because I did end up reversing the props so they're props out. Not everybody's interested in, in that so I felt that I should probably split that out into a separate uh, video. So here are my final thoughts on the Eldark ET-115 V2. So let's go over the pros first. I think the construction is very durable uh, you know it flies um, I think the build quality is excellent on this um, I did uh, you know crash this thing you know it's not my goal to go out and test you know the quads uh, by crashing them into things you know I pay for these things out of my own pocket so, you know, when I crash, it's because I made a mistake. And I can honestly say that this thing held up quite well. You know, I was doing some pretty fast runs and, you know, you know, side swipes and branches and stuff. And uh, it uh, was very durable. Didn't uh, crack the frames, even though it was, you know, colder. It was around 35 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, I think the build quality on this um, quad is great. I think they did a good, good job. Um, quality control. I think the uh, design is quite unique. I don't think there's anything quite like a King Kong. This is my first King Kong quad, but uh, it's just a little different than you know your normal your normal quad. Uh, it's uh, you know they seem to do things their own way. For example, the VTX being on the bottom, which is uh, different. Um, I'm assuming that it has uh, you know the reason why they did that is for better cooling. But, uh, so, you know, it's definitely a, a unique design. Uh, it is a very stable flyer. I mean, even uh, in angle mode, it likes to fly like a Frisbee. Now, that doesn't mean that it won't bank and, and turn well, but it does tend to fly a little more like a, um, you know, whoop class, even though it's way heavier. Um, but what I found is, um, you know, and even in acro mode it flew very stable so i think it's going to be good for beginners to learn how to fly in acro uh, because even in like i was saying even in acro it, it, it is very stable uh let's see um i think it's a good good value 
for the money. The kit is very complete. You get lots of spare props. You get canopies. You get a battery. So from that aspect, I think it's a it's a good value. And uh, lastly, I think it's something that a new pilot can just fly out of the box. As long as you you know tighten up the uh, flight stack, it flies uh, very stable. So again, I think uh, this is definitely good for a new pilot. Uh, let's quickly go over the cons. Uh, it's a little heavy. It weighs 98 grams without a battery as compared to, you know, like the Falcon 15 here, which is 83 grams. So it is, it is uh, a little heavier. Uh, the next thing um, is, you know, the version I got, which was compatible with FR, FR Sky, uh, the um, AC900 receiver doesn't support RSSI, so I probably should have just got uh, the, the plug and play, but, uh, you know, because I like having our RSSI on uh, in the OSD, but uh, anyways, uh, so that to me is a, is a con. Um, not even though the battery strap, you know, it's this rubber band like thing works quite well. I'll probably end up getting a, a regular battery strap for this thing. Uh, the bullnose props are a little loud. So, I mean, I did fly it in a park. I didn't get any, you know, nasty glares. Um, people were walking by, so I didn't get too many, uh, I didn't get any glaring eyes at me. So from that aspect, you know, I think it's still a good park flyer, uh, but it is a little louder than what I, I'm, I'm normally used to. Uh, so you need to take that into consideration. And I, you know, another thing it doesn't have is smart audio, which would be nice. Um, you know, it's a 2018, 2019 um, product. So um, it would have been nice if it would have had uh, smart audio support. And then there's my normal NAG, um, you know, it's an F3. Uh, flight controller versus an F4. It's not a deal breaker, but uh, hopefully they'll eventually upgrade this to an F4. So overall, I give it a definite thumbs up for a new pilot. The only thing I have um, that I can compare it to that I own is uh, the ET-115. I think for a new pilot, I would recommend this because it's over the Falcon 15 because it uh, is more of a complete... Um, kit and you don't have to do any soldering this you had to because it was a plug-and-play you know you have to uh, plug it plug in the uh, and solder the uh, your FR sky in my case a receiver so um, you know if you're a new new pilot you might not want to do that um, however uh, if you know you're more of a novice pilot and you want something that flies a little more like a three inch that's a little faster, I would go with the Falcon 15. So um, more of a new pilot, somebody who wants something that flies a little more like a Whoop class, which this is. I mean, this is, uh, I mean, I, I you know, these are more than just prop guards. It looks like you might get a little bit of uh, ducting here um, with uh, how deep these are. So this thing tends to fly a little more like a Whoop, Whoop type uh, quad. This is, uh, you know, these are just uh, um, prop guards and um, they really don't interfere much with the flight characteristics. So this one is more uh, something that would be more for a novice um, type pilot or somebody that's already, um, you know, you know, well past the, the whoop type type quad. So this I would recommend for somebody that wants something that... Uh, you know, flies a little bit more like a three inch racing quad. So with that, again, um, you know, I definitely give this a thumbs up and I really enjoy flying it. And I, you know, definitely uh, gonna be flying it in the park. Thanks for watching.